So you decide that you want to keep discus. Maybe you've seen one of my videos or you've gone to your local pet store and you fell in love with one of these beautiful fish, but you've heard that they're a little picky about their water parameters, but really are they? And that's what we're going to talk about today. It's Lisa with KGTropicals.com and I wanted to talk about water parameters today for discus. Now, discus aren't as fragile as people think they are. Over the decades, they've been bred to be a lot more tolerable to water conditions. They can handle a higher pH. So, don't be scared to go out and buy a discus. Now, I'm not suggesting if you're a beginner fish keeper, you should go out and buy a discus. You should definitely know how to take care of fish and how to maintain a tank before you buy your first discus. Wild discus come from the Amazon River basins and the water there is very soft and acidic. So when these fish were brought into the hobby, they were extremely fragile. And the reason why they were fragile is because they were pulled straight from the river or else they were first or second generation from a wild discus. Hobbyists back in the day had to go to such great lengths trying to get the water conditions perfect for their discus aquariums. That was not always easy. You figure these fish came straight from the wild or maybe they were first or second generation, and they were used to having a natural environment. So to mimic these conditions in an aquarium, that's not always easy. And these fish would sometimes get sick, they would die, they were finicky, they were picky, because they weren't used to the conditions they were put into. And that's where the reputation came from for them to be fragile. The good news is over the past few decades, breeders all over the world have decided to breed these discus to be more tolerant to water conditions. They've developed a discus that can handle tap water instead of trying to work so hard on mimicking a natural environment like the Amazon. So now we get to concentrate more on keeping our water clean, and that is so important when it comes to keeping discus. That's why you still might hear people to this day say that discus are so hard to keep, but honestly, discus are just not for the lazy fish keeper. When you're keeping discus, it's so important to keep your water clean, especially if you want them to thrive. You want to see them reach their full potential, and you want to see a really happy, healthy fish. And it's really important. When you do your water changes, don't just take a little bit of water out and put water back in. Get a siphon. Actually, get down in the gravel, the sand, or whatever you may have as a substrate. Get the waste out of there. I don't know about you, but I feed my discus two to three times a day. So because I do that, I go ahead and I do water changes about two to three times a week. I do about 20% and I get down in there and I really get into the gravel. My fish are happy, they're healthy, and I can't even get them to stop breeding. It's, it's a problem, I guess, but not really. <laughs> so what does all this mean? Well, if you have domestic discus, the most important thing that you need to be worrying about is keeping your water clean instead of trying to adjust your pH. If your pH is anywhere from 6 to 7.5, then you're going to be fine. You may want to double check with the pet store owner or whoever your supplier is that you did buy your discus from and ask them what the pH is that they were bred in. If you are close to that, if your pH is anywhere close to what they're bred in, then you'll be fine. Let's just say there is a major difference that the supplier is raising these discus in as far as the pH goes versus the pH that you would be putting the discus in. His may be 6.1 and yours might be 7.5. Neither one of these pHs are bad, but what isn't good is trying to get that discus to adjust from a 6.1 pH and going straight to a 7.5 you may want to think about a different supplier. And it's not because they have bad fish. 
you just don't want to have to put your discus through such an adjustment. Let's say you find yourself in this predicament. You go to your supplier, you're ready to buy discus, and you ask him, what do you keep your pH at? And his response is, I don't know. The first thing that comes to mind for me to say is something my daughter would say. Peace out, Girl Scout. Temperature is a big deal too. Discus really like water to be warm. They like it anywhere from 82 to 86, and they can actually be sensitive to lower temperatures. So it's very important to keep a spare heater just in case your other heater goes out. You never know when that'll happen, and it never happens at the right time. So keep in mind, a spare heater is a plus. If you're someone who's already keeping discus, I would love to hear your experiences. I really want others to share their knowledge and their experiences in discus fish keeping because there's so many other people out there that are scared to keep discus. And I think if we work together, we can get more people into this wonderful hobby. Discus aren't for the beginner fish keeper, but you don't have to be someone who's kept fish for decades to be able to keep discus successfully. One of the most important things you can do is have a plan. Know who you're buying them from, know how to take care of them, and always, always keep their water clean. You can't be lazy. These fish are so unique and you won't regret getting them. They're so adorable. Their personalities are just, they're to die for. I love my discus tank, and that's why I'm doing these videos, because I want to share my experiences with you, and I want to help you know what to do for your first discus tank. So there you have it. I hope this has helped you feel a little bit better about keeping discus. Trust me, these are not a fish for you to be scared of. And you know what? They might cost a pretty penny, but if that doesn't scare you, then keeping them shouldn't either. I'll be putting a new video up every Sunday, so if you click that red subscribe button, you won't miss an episode. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.